I want to share with you quickly this morning, uh, I want to continue on the topic of, of confidence, and I want to share with you quickly just the power of, of God confidence in our lives and, and overcoming insecurity. Now, uh, when you think of confidence or you think of someone who is confident, what do you think of? What comes to mind? Is it somebody who's well-dressed? Is it somebody who's, who, who comes across self-assured? Is it somebody who just looks cool? What about in your own life? If I had to ask you whether you're confident or not, what is your confidence based on? Is it based on your looks? Is it based on where you live? Is it based on what you do? Or is it maybe past accomplishments, things you've, you've, you've accomplished? Or is it the abilities and the traits that you were born with? If somebody asks you to do something, is your first response, absolutely, no problem. Or is there a sense of hesitation and maybe apprehension? I want to show you this morning how confidence makes a huge difference in our lives. Now, why is confidence important? Remember last week, we looked at a couple of reasons quickly. Confidence will help you to take on a challenge with, with energy and with enthusiasm. You know, you think about when you, when you lack confidence, you're hesitant. You, you don't want to take on something. It, it also gives you a greater, a greater willingness to take on a new project or maybe a new challenge. The confidence increases our performance whether you're uh, uh, an athlete or an entrepreneur or even a public speaker, when you're confident, you perform better, isn't it? When you're in sales, <laughs> nothing sells like confidence. And so confidence helps us. Uh, confidence increases your power to negotiate for something. It also, you'll find that confident people are more relaxed in a social setting. And so they make friends easier. They are better influencers, and as a result, they become better leaders. And so we said last week, confidence increases your capacity. It just gives you greater capacity. And so in, in short, if you're confident, you'll find you feel better. You operate better. You perform better. Uh, you just It's better all around. Confidence makes all the difference in our lives. And so can you see why the enemy will try and do whatever he can to rob you of, of confidence? So if, if the enemy can make you feel small and insignificant, maybe a little bit inferior, he, he's robbing you of confidence. And you're not going to achieve everything God has for you. you you're not going to step up as it were. Isn't that exactly what he did with the ten spies? He made them feel small and inferior. They, they saw themselves as less than, saw themselves as, as grasshoppers. And so what happened? You and I know the story. They lost out on God's best for them. And so if the enemy can do that, he's robbing us. If the enemy can make us feel guilty and condemned for things that maybe God's already forgiven us for, again, he robs us of confidence. And every time he robs us of confidence, he's robbing us of what God has for us down the line. Now, what are some of the signs that somebody is lacking confidence? Well, probably the most obvious one is when somebody is, is, is overly negative and critical about themselves, it's a sure sign they're lacking confidence. What about if somebody is very much a people pleaser? That's a sure sign they lack confidence. Trying to get that from people, trying to gain the approval of, of other people. What about arrogance? I know I, that it seems wrong. <laughs> Remember what we said last week. Arrogance really is a defense mechanism. Very often you'll find with arrogant people, it's actually it's somebody who feels a little bit inferior and they're trying to compensate for that by trying to project strength and, 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 and confidence and so on. And then very often it comes across as arrogance. Do you know there were some great people in the Bible, great men who lacked confidence? Starting with Isaiah, let me read it to you quickly from chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6. He says, I am doomed. I'm a sinful man. I have filthy lips and I live among 
people with filthy lips. Now, I mean, here's one of the major prophets. You have majors and minors. He's seen as one of the, the majors, and yet he felt inadequate. What about Jeremiah? When God called Jeremiah, he said, Oh, sovereign Lord, I can't speak for you. He says, I'm too young. It's like Timothy. I'm just, I'm too young. I'm, I'm not there yet. What about Moses? When God called Moses, he was pleading with God. He says, oh Lord, I'm not very good with words. He says, I never have been, and I'm not now. I get tongue-tied, and my words get tangled. What about Gideon? Remember the story of Gideon? When God called him, he says, he says but Lord, my clan is the least in all, all of Manasseh, and I am the least in my entire family. And so these were all guys who went on to do great things for God. They really did. These were great men, actually. But there was a time in their lives where they lacked confidence. Why? It was because they were focused on their own ability. One of the most common mistakes you and I make is we focus on our own ability. And let's be honest, that's limited. That's why Jesus says, with God... You can do all things. When you add God's ability together with yours, things change dramatically. And so all I want to ask you this morning is don't allow your level of confidence to keep you from what God wants to do through your life. We've got to learn to just allow God to work through us, even though we may not feel that, that, that we're confident enough, that we have what it takes We've got to remind ourselves that God has what we don't have. When we make room for God, He can take us places we'd never go on our own. And so I want to suggest this morning that we don't need more self-confidence. We need God confidence. Anybody agree with that? We need God confidence. How do we get that? Well, you've got to know what the Word says about you. You've got to know who you are in Christ. So in other words, you, you've got to know how God sees you. Now, before we get there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on that now. Before we get there, I want to quickly show you, I want to highlight a couple of confidence killers. These are the things that destroy our confidence. These are the things that make us feel inferior. And so we're just quickly going to look at five confidence killers. Let's look at the first one quickly. Negative self-talk, negative self-talk. That's when you and I go around and say, I, I don't think I can. I don't think I can. You know what I found? I don't think I can is birthed from a much deeper, I don't think I am. It comes from a, from a deep sense of inferiority. And you know where that comes from? Very often, it's rooted in lies where we say to ourselves, I, I, I'm not good enough, or I'm not as good as so-and-so, or I've failed too many times, I've made too many mistakes, or, or, or maybe, you know, we think, I'm not talented enough. I, I, I was in the back of the queue when they handed out talent, or maybe you're saying, Leonard, I wasn't even in that queue, all right? <laughs> and so somewhere along the line, we believe the lie, <laughs> and it's become who we are. Or, or somebody said something nasty, and we believed that. Or somebody did something nasty, and that got stuck on the inside, and we believed that. And so, if you've been abused at some stage, I just want to say to you, it's easy for the devil to lie to you and to tell you that you're not good enough. If you've grown up, for instance, with an absent parent, it's easy to believe the lie that you're not loved, that you're not valuable. And let me tell you, the devil will use that incident or that chapter in your life, and he'll whisper those lies into your heart again and again. And if you don't know what God's Word says, you'll believe that. It'll affect your confidence. How do we, how do we overcome that? It's pretty simple, really. We've got to replace the lies of the devil with the truth from God's Word. You see, the Bible tells us here in Romans chapter 12, do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. 
How are we transformed? By the renewing of our mind. How do we renew our mind? Exactly that. You've got to replace the lies of the enemy with truth from God's word. You see, friends, confidence is a byproduct of belonging. Can I say that again? It's a byproduct of belonging. So that when you and I know what the Bible says, that I belong to God, I'm a child of Almighty God, that my my, my sins have been forgiven, I've been redeemed, when when I know that, man, there's a confidence that rises up on the inside and, and I, start, I start walking tall in a way I, n- I never did before. I start doing things, accomplishing things that I never did before. People start looking at my life and it becomes attractive like it never did before. Where does it come from? I suddenly realized who I belong to. And so confidence is a byproduct of belonging. Here's another confidence killer. Let's move on to the next one. Our past failures and mistakes. Our past failures and mistakes. So many people today are living just in a sense of of guilt and, and, and condemnation because they're living in the past all the time. All the things they did wrong, all the people they hurt, all the times they, they failed in some other uh, uh, thing. And so as a result, they're living with this with a sense of of inadequacy, they, they're just not good enough. Why is that? Again, they're listening to the lies of the enemy. Stuff God has already forgiven us for, they, they, they still feel guilty and condemned over that. And so if there's one thing I found, one thing that destroys confidence, it's a feeling of failure. You can be on top of the world. You can be doing so well. And suddenly you fail at something or your child fails or your spouse fails, and you go from hero to zero like that, and you walk around thinking, man, what kind of a dad am I? What what kind of a Christian am I? I want to say to you, don't go there. Don't go there. We all fail. We all make mistakes and, and, and do stupid things. And when that happens, how do we handle it? We apologize. You go to that person, you apologize. Or if you've, if you've sinned against God, you, you come to the Lord and you ask for forgiveness. And then you take it a step further. And you ask yourself this question. What have I learned from it? How am I going to handle it differently next time? How can I help somebody else in a, in a similar situation? You see, friends, uh, the past is a place to learn from and not to live in. The past is a place to learn from and not to live in. And so when you and I make mistakes, I say when, not if, because we make mistakes. We, we, We commit some kind of sin. We do crazy stuff at times. When that happens, we ask for forgiveness, Lord forgive me. Lord, I've blown it again. God, please help me. And then we ask ourselves, what have I learned? What have I gained? Because that's when we make progress, when we learn from those things. You see, one of the keys to dealing with past failures is forgiving ourselves. We've got to learn to forgive ourselves. Why do we want to keep on beating ourselves up over things that God's already forgiven us for? And that's why the Bible tells us in, in Hebrews chapter 4, to come boldly to his throne of grace. What's grace? Grace is where God doesn't give us what we deserve. Are you grateful for that? I'm, I'm very grateful. Because if, if God gave me some of the stuff I deserve, I'd be in big trouble. And so, so grace is where, where, where he doesn't give us what we deserve. And the Bible says, just come. Just pull in. <laughs> and, and when you and I feel guilty and condemned, we don't want to. We don't want to come close to God. We don't even want to come to church, let alone, let alone sing and raise my hands. <laughs> Can you see what's busy happening? It's the enemy making us feel guilty, making us feel not good enough. And God says, nonsense, man. <laughs> he says, pull in. Come, come boldly to the throne of grace. Ah, but I feel second class. Listen, listen. There are no second class citizens in the kingdom of heaven, all right? And so sometimes we've just got to remind ourselves, 
my admission into the kingdom of God as, as God's child has been paid for fully and completely. Jesus paid that on the cross. And so there's nothing that you and I need to do to try and add to that. It's been paid for completely. And so that makes me a child of God. And I don't know about you, but, but when I just remind myself of that, Jesus has already done it. He's paid for it. I'm a child of God. Oh, man, then, then I, I, I walk tall. Then there's just, just a God confidence that rises on the inside. Bible says in Isaiah 61 that we have been made righteous. What does that mean? It means that we are in right standing with God. Colossians chapter 2 tells us that we've been made worthy. We've already been forgiven, past tense. Ephesians chapter 1 tells us that God has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Again, it's past tense. When I look at just some of these scriptures, it shows me that God has paved the way for you and me to live with boldness and confidence as children of the Most High God. Not second-class citizens. Well, okay, you can come in as well. No, God welcomes us with open arms. He says, come, pull in. All right, here's another confidence killer. A change of career or responsibility. You see, some people are defined by what they do, by their position, by their title, sometimes by their accomplishments. And so you'll find if that changes suddenly, it rocks their boat, rocks their confidence. So for instance, if a mother finds herself suddenly with an empty nest, her responsibility has changed. And so suddenly it, it makes her feel, it can, it can make her feel insignificant, maybe a little bit insecure. If somebody loses a job or is retrenched or, or even retired, what happens? They don't have the same position anymore. And so suddenly it can make them feel insecure. If somebody has accomplished great things in the past and, and they lived in that glory, but now what happens? People tend to forget the glory days. And suddenly when that person realizes, but nobody is remembering my glory days, it can make them feel insecure. Listen, friends, we've got to realize you are not defined by what you do. You're defined by whose you are. And so I'm not defined by my position yet. I'm not defined by the size of this church. I'm not defined by the title. That's why I, I don't want you to call me pastor. Call me Leonard, I'm fine. I know I'm a pastor. And so uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. You know, I find it quite, quite humorous at times how, how some people, man, they, they use the title. They big on the titles and stuff. I'm not defined by that stuff. I'm defined by whose I am. And so this other stuff can come and go and chop and change. That's fine. I know who I am in Christ. All right. Let's quickly move on to the next one. The next confidence killer, other people's opinion of us. Who knows that this is important, but it's not important. <laughs> what do I mean? L let me say this. If you're taking notes, you can write down. Some people's opinion is important. Some people's opinion. Well, Leonard, who's the people who really love you and care for you and have your best interest at heart? Their opinion matters. Not the critic. Not the person who's constantly at you trying to point out what you're doing wrong and what's not good enough. And they've got a list of six stuff that's not. That's not your friend. That's your critic. All right? And let, let me just say to you, by the way, some critics are disguised as friends. They're not friends. They just, just send them. All right. <laughs> they, that's not, a friend doesn't criticize you all the time because they know the, the, the little issue that you have, oh, they have bigger. <laughs> and they're big enough to realize that. And so what happens? The true friend makes room for that. It's not a, not a hassle for that. But the critic... Oh, man, it's almost as if they see themselves as perfect. They've arrived. They are God's gift. 
to mankind to point out what everybody is doing wrong. <laughs> All right? And, and, and so they will point out the splinter in your eye. And they overlook the, the beam in their own eye. But the mistake, if we make the mistake of listening to people like that, man, it'll mess up your confidence. And so just, just settle this in your mind. There are going to be people in your life, and, I, and I'm sorry to say it's normally a very small group of people who will, who will encourage you and motivate you. And it's like, it's like almost like that's the wind in your back. It's like, thank you, God, for those people. And normally, let me tell you, you can normally count them on one hand. But there'll be a number of other people who somehow just constantly criticize and put you down. Man, you've got to remember who you are. Forget about that nonsense. Who you are. Because when you start looking at who you are and what the Bible says, it changes everything. Let me quickly show you in Scripture. Uh, and, and I've given it to you from the message translation because it just, it just almost freshens it up a little bit. This is how much God loves the world. You can put your name in there. This is how much God loves Leonard or Joe or Jerry, whatever your name is, or Joanne, all right. <laughs> he gave his son, his one and only son. He gave heaven's best. That's how much he loves you. 1 John 3 verse 1. See how much a father loves us. He calls us his children, and that is what we are. We've got to realize who we are. I'm a child of the Most High God. Ephesians 2 verse 10. You are God's masterpiece. And so when you and I, when we realize just how much God loves us, what He's given for us, what we're going to celebrate now next weekend over Easter, man, somehow it changes how we see ourselves. And so all I'm saying today is people don't determine your destiny, God does. Don't allow what people say, what they, what they do to you to distort the image that you have on the inside. You're a child of God, all right? Let's move on quickly to the last confidence killer, and that's comparing yourself, comparing ourselves. Now, social media is definitely not helping in this, in this uh, area of our lives. Because when you start looking at what somebody else is doing and what's happening in their lives, man, you know, <laughs> you, all you see is their best moments, if you haven't figured that out. <laughs> it's the best picture. It's not what they look like when they wake up in the morning and their hair's this way and their eyebrows are that way. <laughs> It's not that picture. They don't show us the worst. They, they post the best. <laughs> and if you and I compare ourselves with that, oh man, you'll never have confidence. You don't want to go crawl into, into some hole. And so let me just say to you quickly, God never created us to be somebody else. God created you to be you. God doesn't want us to go comparing ourselves to, to, to someone else all the time. He, he, he doesn't, you know, you don't have to try and outdo somebody else. Just be the best who God made you to be. And God also didn't create us to be against ourselves. That's the enemy's job, by the way. And he does a pretty good job at that already, all right? You see, his job is not only to get you to, to, to engage in sin and, and immoral behavior, but his job is to break you down and, and, to, and to rob you of your confidence. Why? Because the image that you and I carry on the inside affects every area of our lives. It affects how we perform. It affects what we believe about ourselves. It affects our, our confidence, our level of confidence. It, it affects our relationships. It affects every area of our lives. Can you see why the enemy will try and rob you of confidence? Can you see why God wants you to walk tall and, 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 to, and to know who you are in Him? To, 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 to do it humbly, but yet confidently? Because that's when we represent Him well, and that's when we accomplish what He has for us. And so what I want to do quickly is let's go back and let's look at those five confidence killers. And I, I want you to try and identify the one that's negatively affecting your life. Please, not all five of them. 
the one, all right, which is the main one, which is your one, where you say, man, this one, negative self-talk, I've been putting myself down, or maybe you say past failures and mistakes, or what about the next one over there, change of career or responsibility, you say, Leonard, I've, I'm busy going through that right now, and it's not me, I didn't even realize this thing is not me, what about the next one, other people's opinion, you've been listening to the wrong people, that's not your friend, that's your critic, all right, and what about comparing yourself to somebody else, God never made you to compare yourself, which one is yours? Because you see, when you and I can identify what it is, we say, okay, now I, I, I get it. I didn't realize. I'm busy walking around with that stupid thing busy messing me up. And that's when we can come and we can correct it. How do we correct it? We correct the lies because if the enemy uses all of those lies. We correct the lies with the truth from God's word. We replace it with truth. You've got to go back and have a look at the truth. And so what I want to do now is I, I want to pray for us. And I want to ask, Lord, help us to replace that lie with truth from your word. Help us to see ourselves the way you see us, as children of the Most High God, as conquerors. Amen? Come, let's stand. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that you love us. <laughs> Sometimes we look at our own lives and, and our own nonsense, and, and we don't know how you can love us. But you're just an amazing God, you do. And that's why we worship you. We come into this place week after week just to worship you because you're just such a loving, gracious, heavenly Father. And so, Lord, we've identified now that one thing that's busy pulling us down, that, that confidence killer, and I pray, Lord, that you help every one of us replace the lie with the truth from God's Word. And this week, Lord, as, as we just open your Word and we just start reading, I pray, Father, that the truth is just going to jump out at us. It's going to become a rhema word, a reality in our lives and change us forever. I pray in Jesus' name. And everyone said... Amen. Bless you.